Mr Speaker. Ah, the Honourable Crispin Mason. Mr Speaker, each year I say it's great to be back, and indeed it is uh, great to be back. I'm very conscious that last year, in the course of uh, my speech on the Prime Minister's speech, I mentioned my great hole-in-one, so it seems only fair that this year uh, I should acknowledge that I had far too many treble bogeys, and for those who don't understand golf, that's the sort of golfing equivalent of Labour's candidate selections. <laughs> And frankly, my putting sucks. I totally missed the mark, just like Ian Lees Galloway's questions in the House. So it's fair to say I had a shocking summer. I agree with Andrew Little that Wellington had a shocking summer. And what I was forced to do uh, was spend a lot of time reading. And because it's, we're on the verge of the centenary of the Russian Revolution, spent a lot of time reading about the Russian Revolution. So the first book I read was all about Rasputin. Now, there was a chap who had more staying power than Winston Peters. <laughs> Do you know it, re it required five cakes laced with arsenic, five bullets, and he needed to be tossed into the Neva River before they could get rid of him. Uh, and I'm sure Winston uh, would, be uh, would not be as hard to get rid of. The other book I read, which was very interesting, was a book called Lenin on the Train which told the story of the perfidy of the Germans who let him leave Switzerland in a sealed train and tra uh, travel across Germany uh, so that he could get into Russia, where, of course, as Churchill said, he was nothing more than a plague bacillus who gave Russia and, indeed, the world nothing more than a massive calamity, probably the worst calamity the worst calamity of the 20th century. Uh, and, of course, those views are utterly discredited, except for uh, North Korea uh, and a few Marxist-Leninist lunatics uh, that there are around the world and who sometimes emerge from time to time. And I want to read the House a couple of uh, statements that were recently made by such people. Our struggle for social justice brings us into irreconcilable conflict with the capitalist mode of production and all of other forms of class society. This requires us to take a strong stance on the struggle of the working class. And, and, and then, capitalism is a violent and antagonistic relation between workers and those who exploit them. As workers, we experience perpetual violence, and this violence must be brought to an end. We therefore fight to bring about the end of capitalism. So did these words come out of Pierre Pinonyang? No. Did they come from the, the mouth of Stalin or Lenin? No. They came from the Green Party in New South Wales. Uh, and uh, those are the sorts of sentiments that you get from Green parties around the world. And were we to have our own equivalent of the October Revolution, a calamity here with the Greens in government, those sorts of views would be exhumed here. And, Mr Speaker, I do say to the Labour Party, and Stuart Nash would understand this, remember what the Bolsheviks did to the Social Democrats. That's what the Greens want to do to them. They regard them nothing more. They regard the Labour Party as nothing more than useful idiots who can be liquidated in the fullness of time, and that memorandum of understanding means nothing. And it may seem, it may seem that James... I beg your pardon? It is. It's hard to disagree with any of my fundamental propositions. And I say to this, do not be deluded by the dirty, dirty deal that's been done in Ohario, uh, because there are dirtier deals that the Greens have in store for the Labour Party. And one of the best things about standing in the great seat of Rongatai this year is not necessarily that Annette King won't be my opponent, because she's a formidable opponent. It's that I won't have to put up with Russell Norman going on in that t Australian twang of his, talking about dirty dirty deals, because there's nothing dirtier than the dirty, dirty deal in Ohario. And, and I just want to say this, we've had a fascinating uh, last few months. The, this government has successfully changed leaders. We're a happy and united team as I look across at my beloved colleagues. Our opponents can't even sort out the ranking of list candidates. But I particularly want to say that I admire Poto Williams who is a strong and decent member of parliament. As JFK once said, it takes a lot of courage to stand up to your enemies. It takes even more courage uh, to stand up to your friends. 
and that's what she did, admittedly with the help of a PR person, but that's what she did, uh, and she had to face the music. Because Mr Jackson is not fit to be a candidate for anyone. He is a disgrace, and the comments that he made about Grant Robertson a few years ago were totally and utterly disreputable and inappropriate. You can, you can argue with people over the issues, as Annette and I have done over the years, as Winnie Laban and I uh, did in Mana, uh, but you can still like the person uh, and not resort to the kind of gutter tactics that we had from Mr Jackson. And I, I can admire my opponents. I thought the member for Roskill made a very good maiden speech and wish him all the best for the future. Stuart Nash uh, is a good bloke, but there are sometimes the line is crossed and people like Mr Jackson have nothing to contribute, I'm being charitable, have nothing to contribute to this place. Mr Speaker, we are an infrastructure government, uh, and I say it's great to be back because I approach this year with the same enthusiasm that I have approached every year since I was so lucky and privileged uh, enough to become a minister. And when you look at what we have achieved in the last eight years, frankly, it's mind-boggling. Look for, as you'd expect an Attorney General to say, the legal infrastructure is steadily being updated. Mark my words, the Tuturi Whenua legislation is true legal infrastructure reform. And the day will come when people will truly recognise the wonderful contribution that the Minister of Māori Development has made in this area. It's worth billions to the economy. It's been a huge task. It was started off by me uh, in 2011, but it's worth the effort. I look across at the member for Ireland. Of all my colleagues, I have to say, I don't think I've ever said this to you, you, uh, well, the member, is my favourite colleague. He's an outstanding minister. <laughs> He has rebuilt Christchurch, and, uh, and, and well, that's the way of the world because Mr Brownlee has been an outstanding minister, and he picked up uh, an issue of a totally wrecked city uh, and has done a fabulous job. It's the second uh, city of the, uh, of the country, and he is going to be remembered uh, for that wonderful contribution. Just the same uh, as uh, the work he has been uh, doing in Kaikoura uh, is going to be recognised. Look at the roading infrastructure that Mr Brownlee worked on and has been picked up uh, by Mr Bridges in recent times. Tomorrow, of course, the Kapiti Expressway is open. That's something we can be really proud of. We're not stopping there. After uh, Pekka Pekka, it's going to be opened up to Otaki. Look at Transmission Gully. Uh, look at the Waterview project that's shortly to be opened. These are exciting projects, and if you go back to 2008, they weren't even dreamed of. And we'd achieve a lot more in Wellington uh, if the City Council would uh, stop acting like Luddites and would get off their chuff and start focusing uh, on a bit of infrastructure, because the Basin Reserve is easily sorted out, but it's going to require a bit of leadership from the Wellington City Council. Uh, and in my experience in recent years, they can't even get cycleways uh, in Island Bay right. Uh, and even the Tramways Union wrote to me about that, and I found myself agreeing with what the Tramways Union had to say. Just today, boards of inquiry have been announced for major roading infrastructure uh, in Auckland. And just today, uh, the Minister of Communications has been talking about the work that we've been doing on UFB infrastructure, the UFB uptake, up 13% on the last quarter. There's so much good that there is to talk about. In the immortal words of Mrs Thatcher, I could go on and on and on. The minute, the minute I mentioned Mrs Thatcher, of course, Judith Collins' head popped up uh, because uh, she is one of the heirs of Margaret Thatcher. But let me say, I approach this year with the same positive view, the same enthusiasm that I had when I first became a minister on the 13th of January, I met with Napui in Auckland, and it's going to be Napui's year if they knuckle down and put aside personality difficulties and focus on the issues. And then the following week, I was visiting Ngāti Maniapoto, Whakatohia, Te Whanawa, Apanui. It was a tremendous week getting out there 
talking to iwi, talking about their aspirations, uh, and I approach my ninth year as Minister of Treaty Negotiations with that same positive view, that same can-do uh, attitude, uh, and I love working uh, with my colleagues in uh, OTS and my Crown negotiators, a couple of whom are former Labour MPs, and uh, anyone over there after this uh, forthcoming election is welcome to approach me because I'm sure they would make great negotiators. <laughs>